The last of the three tests that you're responsible for in chapter one is to be able to prove the comparison test. <coughs> Excuse me. The comparison test is a two-step process. The first one, first step, you need to do this between this thing again. You need to show that your function is between zero and another function or a known function is less than your function. But you need to show some kind of a betweenness for x greater than or equal to a. Usually, usually x is greater than 1, but not always. Could be. For areas it could be anything. Then uh, here's what you're going to do. Let's say that your function, you knew somehow that your function was smaller than a larger one, okay? So this is yours right here, and the larger one is known. It's always larger than yours, and the larger one converges. What will that have to say about yours using logic? And let's say it one more time. You know that theirs is larger than yours, and theirs converges. What does that say about your smaller one? It also converges, right? So this is how you prove convergence. It doesn't tell you what the area is, but it tells you that it converges. So that's, that's this first part. The second part is, let's say you knew that yours was the larger one. Yours was the larger of the two. And let's say the smaller one was tested, and it turned out that the smaller one diverged. So if the smaller one diverges, what does yours have to do? Yours diverges too. So that is your that is your comparison test for improper integrals. It's kind of a nice one because you get to visualize areas. And it's, I, I kind of like it. We're going to do an example on the next slide here. We're going to take e to the negative x squared, that's the um, red one, and then e to the negative x, which is the blue one. Now, what does the blue one seem to be compared to the red one? The blue one seems to be greater. Don't you think, oh, did I say that backwards? Did I say that uh, e to the negative x squared was the red one? Yeah, that's right. This is the red one. Because it's, it's greater here, but it's less than all the rest of the time. Think of like two. You know, one over e to the fourth is going to be smaller than one over e to the second. One over e to the ninth is going to be smaller than one over e to the third. So this makes sense. But this one will always be smaller after a certain point, after one. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to prove that this does or does not converge. So would you write, does integral from 1 to infinity e to the negative x squared dx converge? We're going to do this in two steps. Step one. We've got to show an in-betweenness. So if I had a zero here, which is going to be bigger, e to the negative x squared or e to the negative x? bigger is. This is going to be 1 over e to the x is probably going to be the bigger of the two than 1 over e to the x squared. Because as soon as x is bigger than 1, this thing is always going to be a bigger value making the fraction smaller. This will be a smaller value making the fraction bigger. So we need to state that first. Now, if this is always smaller than this larger one, then we should be able to say if let's see what this integral gives us if we get a value like 6 then if this is convergent what does that say about our smaller one that's all also convergent so now we're going to do step 2 that is to evaluate from 1 to infinity this larger one uh, e to the negative x dx. By the way, I think you can do that in your head. Isn't this just going to be, uh, what's the derivative of negative x? 
negative 1, right? So won't this just be negative e to the negative x going from 1 to infinity? Rewriting it, it's negative 1 over e to the x going from 1 to infinity. Then we can check it out. We can go the limit as x goes to infinity of negative 1 over e to the x minus a negative 1 over e to the first. What's this going to go to? What's that going to go to? 0. Yep, 1 over infinity. we go there fast. And then this is just going to be 1 over e. So this area from 1 to infinity is 1 over e. That means it converges. So if the smaller one or the larger one converges, what will the smaller one have to do? Converge as well. So here it goes. Therefore, statement. You write your two since things. What's one thing in the since statement? The in betweenness. 0, 1 over e to the x squared, 1 over e to the x. Got to put that. And the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x dx converges. You can even say to 1 over e if you want. Then, if that larger one converges, then the integral from 1 to infinity, e to the negative x squared, dx, converges by what? Comparison test. There you go. So all, I'm, I'm not really doing anything tricky. I'm telling you step one, write the between. Step two, evaluate the bigger of the two. Find out if it converges. Since the in-betweenness exists and the uh, thing, it converges, the area converges, then that area converges by the comparison test. Am I telling you what this converges to? No. It's just saying yes or no that it converges. Is it okay with that? 